Governor, I want to start with you and an issue that has defined Arizona uh, in many ways, some say for better, some say for worse, and that is SB 1070. Is SB 1070 good for Arizona? Has it been good since you signed this bill into law? Absolutely. There is no doubt about it. You know, uh, the people of Arizona are frustrated. We needed to do something. And I signed the toughest e illegal immigration bill in the country. And I think that it not only has united Arizona, but it's united um, uh, America. And I will not back down. We will continue to move forward. The bottom line is that we need our borders secured. And we can't afford all the illegal immigration. Uh, what it's costing us in health, education, and incarceration is above our means. We can't even sustain what we're doing now. So it's most most important. 1070, good for Arizona? Well, you know, however you feel about uh, Senate Bill 1070, it's hurt us. It's hurt Arizona's economy seriously, and we see the, the stories every day. But what I'm concerned about is border security. And as Governor Brewer herself has said uh, on a number of occasions, SB 1070 does nothing to secure the border. It does nothing to fight border crime. As your Attorney General, that's what I've been doing for the last seven years. I've been focused on the cartels on putting them out of business, on, on eliminating their, their operations, hum, smuggling human beings into the United States. And we have had significant success intercepting the money that goes to the cartels. And I've called upon the federal government to pick up that mantle and to take the offensive. We've been playing defense way too long on the border. And it's time now to go on the offensive, go after the cartel bosses, cut them off. Because the only way people come across the border illegally is with organized criminal help. And we need to do what I've been doing, follow that lead and cut the cartels apart so they won't be bringing people illegally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, of course, we all know that we wouldn't have all these serious problems if we did get our borders secured. And th that is why people are so frustrated. You yeah, know, Terry, we, are we are grateful. That's what you've said we a number of times, Governor. Se well, it certainly has helped, hasn't it? Obviously, it's got the attention of the federal government. Um, you know, mm -hmm. the statement, as you have said, and, and uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security and the President of the United States making the statements that our borders are as secure as they have ever been. Well, they're not. Why would, they be for why would they be sending more National Guard and Border Patrol, which isn't enough? The people of Arizona want to feel safe in their homes. They want to feel safe in their states. And you know, it's a simple fact. A country without borders is like a house without walls. It collapses. We want our borders secured. Well, Quickly, I want to stop please. illegal immigration as much as the next person, and I believe the way to do it is to focus on the illegal cartels, the people that are bringing people illegally into the United States. And, and the problem is 1070 doesn't do that, and I believe we need to focus our Arizona efforts on where the problem is. And we need to take the offensive. We need to cut off the money going to the cartels. That's what I've been working on for the last seven years. And we need to take criminal prosecution into Mexico to go after the cartel leaders so that they won't have the facilitation of the organized criminal backup that brings people illegally into this country. That's how we're going to stop on And I say secure the border and you won't have those problems. Okay, well, Barry. I believe in, that's what that's I funny. say. In your opening statement, you said you did not want this campaign defined by 1070. Absolutely not. We can secure our border. I mean, I've been up to the Groom Lake, and if we secured it in the same exact way they did, which is roughly the same length, so it has been done. This is old technology. We can stop the illegal crossings except at the ports of entry. <coughs> I, that's why it's on my website. It's a defined plan. I seem to be the only one who has one that physically stops it while giving it a disincentive for people to come here illegally. And that, I think, is really going to be the key, is to stop putting a tub of honey in our front yard and then telling the bears across the street they can't have any. Well, we know what happened because people are going to try to feed their families. They're going to try to come to where the opportunity is. And, and we've quashed it with this whole 1070 thing just because this has become a very racist mm -hmm. uh, attitude of the people who are saying, I support it, so I'm against illegal immigration. But Terry was absolutely right. It has nothing to do with immigration. Uh, Larry, your mm -hmm. idea is 1070. Well, I, I think it's a, I agree. It's a frustration bill. People are frustrated with the, the, the real issue of the border and what's going on. And, and it has hurt us. It hurt us in the perception of the uh, nationally, and it's hurt our tourism. So to say it hasn't hurt us it, is not true. But the real issue is, is what are we going to do about the bigger picture, which is the border and security. And even the further step back is what is the cause of why so many people want to come in from Mexico or south of the border through here, whether it's... 
Actually, it's not, it, that is not really the issue. The issue, basically, because we talk about tourism, we talk about driving the economy down, is because people mm -hmm. like Mr. Goddard's supporter of the unions that are calling out and screaming out uh, for the boycotts, you know, driving, they want to drive our economy down and they want to take jobs away from people that desperately need them. That's where the problem is. You know, the governor was all over the paper today trying to imply that I'm in favor of the boycott, and I want to make it very clear this evening. I absolutely am not. I think the, bo the boycott should be stopped immediately, and I have called upon national groups and local politicians to back off, not to hurt Arizona anymore. But what is hurting us right now, economically, are statements, false statements, made by Jan Brewer about how Arizona has become so violent that we are a place of fear, that we have beheadings in the desert. Those are false statements that cause people to think that Arizona is a dangerous place and they don't come here and they don't invest here because our governor has said such negative things about our state. And Jan, I call upon you today to say that there are no beheadings. That was a false statement and it needs to be cleared up right now. And you know, uh, Terry, I will call you out. I think that you ought to renounce your support and um, endorsement of the unions that are boycotting our state and trying to drive our economy into the ground. I think I made it very jobs clear. Away I do not from support the, the boycott. No way, no how. And I've taking, done everything I can to fight against well, it. They endorse me in spite supporters. of my views, not these because of your, them. The, well, they, no, they endorse you because of your views, because you support what they're doing. Very well, quickly, it's absolutely please. untrue, and Let, I think we need to clarify that. All right, that. go ahead, please. I have been opposed to the boycott from the beginning, and I believe it does great harm to Arizona, and I've urged anybody I talk to to get off it. He's I've written letters to the congressman that was involved in simulating the boycott and helped to change his mind, and I'm very proud of that. This is obviously the, one of the biggest issues that Arizona is facing, and America, and the union organizers that are boycotting Arizona are supporting you because of what you stand for. Well, Terry, will you stop tearing you down our state for... and making false statements about Arizona being a dangerous place? The fact is we have the lowest violent crime rate we've had in 30 years, and you are demeaning the men and women of law enforcement by saying we are dangerous and people are afraid in their houses. That Terry, is simply the federal untrue. Government, the ter Terry, the, the federal government put signs up 30 miles, miles south, south of the Capitol saying, danger, travel at your own risk. Don't tell me that we don't have a problem out there with the drug cartels. Well, Your people federal are, people government. are not in fear in their houses, and that's, that's an not true. Have you been down makes, to the border? I've have been you to been the border down to the border? frequently. I'm the one that's on their, the border fighting against these cartels. I know every inch of the border. Why did you go? A, you don't want to secure the border. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, why did you go? You don't want to secure the border. I don't you want those borders that open. Point. What did you say? I don't want to secure the border. Everything I've done for the last seven years has been fighting the cartels and trying to do everything we can do as state officials to stop the organized criminal threat to Arizona. Well, Barry, I want you to get on this. we made real progress. <laughs> Please. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because all this bickering is just a distraction from our economy and the depression that is hitting every home and every family in America. Why didn't SB 1070 simply require that anybody who wants a provision of goods or services from government to prove their eligibility and leave the rest of us alone? It's about privacy. That would have solved everything that SB 1070 even begins to portend. And, and Actually, I, can we get off of 1070? I mean, not yet, Barry. Not issue. quite yet. We're, we're just going to hang on to it for a little oh, while. Barry, Larry, I want Senate Bill 1070 just simply mirrors the federal law. The, the federal uh, law is what's wrong. Absolutely. And, and <laughs> well, let's I talk about that. fixing the problem because right now, Very good. The folks in Congress have been be unable to get immigration reform on the docket, but that mm -hmm. is a fundamental way that we can get everybody together, clear the decks, and make sure that we're all legal in this country. That's our objective. That's what I believe we absolutely have to accomplish. And Barry, you're right. Uh, the economy is the overwhelming. It's the, the elephant in the middle of the room, absolutely. if you will. And I, it's I the wanna, thing that we are ignoring at our peril. Okay, I want to get back, get I get back to that plan, point in a second. We are going to lose as a state. Larry, I want you to get in on this very quickly. Your thoughts? On, on 1070? Yes. Well, the bill itself, 70% um, of, of the bill did mirror federal law but the last few pages didn't. And that's, that's where I had a problem with the bill. We should be, uh, people should be legal in the country. 
not illegal. You and as far as the, may I finish? Please. So uh, regarding the last parts of the bills, it was the, the, the uh, I think it was section 13, 29, 29, and 28. It was regarding a, uh, where if you were harboring anybody in any building. So if I'm at church with my parishioners and I knowingly or unknowingly know somebody's in that church with me, then I could be in trouble by the law. I could be, you know, the police could show up and take us all off, then we have to sort it all out. So the problem with, with civil rights was regarding the last two parts of the bill. So Okay, I want to get to what, what you mentioned, which was uh, federal inaction. <laughs> Sure. And, and, and what many see as the reason behind 1070, why shouldn't the state try to do what the federal government so far has not done? Well, the state needs to do everything it can within the law and within the Constitution. And that's why we've been focused on stopping the cartels, seizing their assets, following the leads, and arresting their leaders. That, I believe, is the, is the answer to solving this problem, along with solving decades, decades of mm. federal inaction in the area of immigration. Uh, we're paying a huge price right now because for almost 30 years, the federal government hasn't paid attention, hasn't enforced the employer sanctions as they should have, as they swore they would in 1986, and has not made, has not changed the visas, the work visas, so that they corresponded to the actual jobs available in the United States. That's created the problem that we have today, and they need to fix it because, and Congress, for whatever reason, is just dead in the water. They will not introduce the bill. They will not start this process mm -hmm. to try to bring some justice to our country. But back, to the, back to the original, to our economy. <laughs> to the original question, though, if they're dead in the water, if they won't start the mm -hmm. process, why not a state like Arizona start their own process? Well, Arizona has in some significant ways. We have the <laughs> significant employer sanctions law, and that's a, a honeypot that Barry referred to a minute ago, is a big reason why people cross the border. So let's fix that. We can do that within the state. There's a special exemption in federal law that allows <laughs> states to do what Arizona has done to, uh, to go after business licenses. Well, there's, there's a very good start. Uh, in the meantime, a federal court has taken most of 1070 and is still considering it. They won't let it go into effect. So we've got to focus on what ails Arizona. And it seems to me, as Barry said a minute ago, that's our broken economy. We have lost, just in Governor Brewer's time, 128,000 jobs, and we're losing more every month. This is the number one priority for the next governor, and we've got to get to work on it. Governor, uh, you have said that the action by the judge that blocked major parts of 1070 mm -hmm. has caused Arizona, quote, irreparable harm. Has it, and how? I do. I, I really believe that strongly. I think the majority of Arizonans believe that because we are a legislature. We have the right to enact laws, and it mirrors the federal law, and if the feds won't do their job, then we will do their job for them, we will help them. The bottom line is, is that we cannot continue to reap all the damage, and when Terry refers to the drug cartels, and on and on and on and on, if we simply got our borders secured, and 1070 mm -hmm. was in effect, all this would stop. It would make your job a lot mm -hmm. easier as Attorney General. Yeah. I've, I've got Please. to say that this whole 1070 thing, my opposition has always been singular. It is national ID. I don't want the, the citizens, the free citizens of Arizona to be in the national databases. But th there's also, there's a very realistic answer to solving these problems without getting into businesses and people's lives and their families and uprooting them. And, and to give the disincentive for them to be here illegally is the smartest thing to do. And we don't have to grow government to ferret everybody out, which is what this eventually ends up. But we have the bigger issue is always going to be, do, can we secure our border and who are we going to let in? Well, the feds have been very lax. They haven't done anything. And I advocate self-help right now. Let's fix our state. There are people dying on our borders and I'm talking about Mr. Krenz, for instance, uh, on our borders, people who are suffering with no security in their homes because we haven't done anything and the current governor has been saying we're waiting for Barack Obama to do something and that's been the excuse for all our inaction. I think we've got to step on it, disregard the feds, and don't let them impose on us any longer. Let's just ignore okay. them. Maybe they'll go away. Okay, we, <laughs> we can't ignore what you wanted to talk about earlier, and that is the economy and jobs and, and these sorts of things. Governor, um, mm. what will you do to grow jobs mm. in Arizona? 